A default MySQL installation includes several databases, including a number which are used for administrative purposes, two which contain sample data, and finally one named test which is generally used as a place where new users can get acquainted with basic commands. To view a list of available databases, let's log back into the MySQL server using the same credentials as provided previously, providing our password, and finally, once logged in, you can execute the show databases command to view a list of all databases, which at this time include six. Now, because show databases is the first command we've executed within the client, I'd like just to perhaps go on a tangent for a moment and talk a bit more about MySQL's behavior in regards to entering commands. First of all, you probably noticed that we concluded the command with a semicolon. This is required because MySQL uses the semicolon as a way to know that everything preceding that semicolon is exactly what you want to send to the MySQL server for execution. However, MySQL is not particular about, for instance, where that semicolon appears. So we could execute this command like this and achieve the same results. This behavior is in place because, particularly when writing lengthier or more complex MySQL statements, you might want to format the command using multiple lines for easier readability. Although, frankly, it isn't typical that you would use the client to type in particularly lengthy commands because there are other more convenient options for doing so, which we will talk about in later sections. However, for now, just to kind of prove that point, here is an example in which we will add show to one line, databases to another, and finally semicolon to the last to retrieve the same set of databases just fine. Secondly, the MySQL client is not particular about casing. So, for instance, we could type show in all caps followed by databases and again retrieve the same list of databases. So first thing, you're always going to want to conclude your command with a semicolon. However, MySQL is not particular in terms of whether that semicolon immediately follows your SQL statement. And finally, casing is not an issue when it comes to the MySQL client. In fact, I generally tend to supply the MySQL specific keywords in all caps, which makes it easy to visually separate those from database names, table names. But of course, that's just a preference. You can do whatever you'd please. Incidentally, if you happened to misspell either show or databases in this example, then you've already encountered the incredibly annoying beeping sound, which indicates an error. Let's assume I misspell databases, go ahead and execute that, and you hear the annoying beeping sound in the background. You can disable this sound by passing along the no beep option when logging into the MySQL client. In fact, if I go ahead and mistype the command, there is no beeping sound in the background. Of course, you're probably going to want to disable this permanently, so later in the video, I'll show you how to permanently do so by way of modifying MySQL's configuration file. Okay, so back to this matter of databases. You can start working with a specific database by switching over to it using the use command. So for instance, if we want to switch over to the aforementioned test database, we can execute use test followed by the semicolon. And you'll see that we're told that we've switched over or changed over to that database. Further, you can use the show tables command to learn more about the tables which reside in that database. In the case of the test database, there are none. So we will see the empty set result. However, if you switch over to one of the databases containing sample data, you'll find that there is actually quite a few tables included within one of those databases. So we'll switch over to the Sakila database, which is a rather large sample database. Execute show tables, and you'll see that 23 tables are found in this database.
So once you've switched over to a database, you can begin carrying out various administrative tasks associated with that database, including notably creating and managing both tables and table data. However, rather than just use the test database as a dumping ground for experimental commands, I'd like to instead guide you through a typical sequence of steps which you'll carry out in order to create a new project database. Begin by using the create database command, passing along the name of the database you'd like to create. And once done, congratulations, you've just created your first MySQL database. Once created, you're going to want to remember to switch over to that new database, presuming you want to begin using it right now because MySQL will not automatically do this for you. So after creating the CRM database, you're going to have to switch over to it again using the use command. Incidentally, because typically you're going to return to a particular database over and over again, you can save yourself the extra step of having to switch over to that database after having logged in by instead providing that database name on the command line along with your other connection variables. So if I go ahead and quit and return to the MySQL connection statement, you can identify the database name simply by passing it along with the other connection variables. Again, I'm prompted for my password. And in fact, we are now logged in using that database.